Do you smell that? That rich, intoxicating aroma wafting through the air? Welcome back to the Piatto channel, where today we're elevating a classic. Every layer, a new discovery. Our beef filet cradled in a soft crepe, embraced by sweet prosciutto, and adorned with a rich mushroom and truffle duxelle. And all of this encased within a crispy, flaky pastry. This is not just Beef Wellington. This is Beef Wellington the Piatto way. I'm gonna fly. Here is our beef filet from the head to the beginning of the tail. As you can see, it is already cleaned of fat. All that remains is to cut it down to size so that we have just the center of the filet. This is about 2.2 pounds or one kilogram of filet. The beef wellington is made only with this cut. So what do we do with the rest? Well, we could do a lovely roast or a second beef wellington if we can accept two pieces of beef in the center. Think of that as a poor man's wellington. And look at this piece of meat. We are looking for a roughly even cut for our Wellington. And here we've got it. There's no cut of beef more prized than this. Now we just remove this final piece and our Chateaubriand is ready to marinate. And with this other piece, we can make a stew fit for a king. We salt it well and let this filet rest for at least two hours. The salt needs to penetrate the beef inside and we need to give time for the process of osmosis to reabsorb all of the juice that the salt calls to the surface of the meat. A common error that beginners make is to salt, but not give time for the juice to reabsorb. This error opens the door to losing flavor and having a terrible sear. And now we're gonna put this to bed for a two hour nap. Still talking about salt. Another common error is to add fine salt at the end of the cooking time. It's a folly that could ruin this piece of filet and so the beef wellington itself. This applies to the Florentine steak as well, which you can also watch us prepare on our channel. Never salt the meat at the end, aside from a sprinkle of coarse salt when it's on the plate. While the Chateaubriand is resting, we prepare our crepe and the rest of our ingredients for our beef wellington. These are the ingredients for making crepes, which will not only give another level of flavor to the beef wellington, but serves to protect the crispy laminated pastry on the outside from the juices coming from the meat and other ingredients during the cooking process. We don't want a soggy bottom, as the British like to say. Two eggs, beaten. This is a base recipe. Savory crepes, sweet crepes. There we go, nicely beaten. We add the flour, the salt, the sugar, and we incorporate the milk a little at a time, mixing any clumps of the batter each time milk is added. Perfect, in go the eggs. melted butter, and this is the right consistency for crepe batter. See how liquidy it is? There's roughly two to two and a half times the amount of liquid to dry ingredients in the batter. We almost always strain our batter because even if you're very careful, some clumps usually remain in the batter and we want to remove those. And while we give this crepe batter a little rest, we'll preheat our oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius. Static. This baking tray has been in our preheated oven for 10 minutes. Why? Because for our beef wellington, we want to make a rectangular crepe. A crepe that will be the right size for wrapping our filet. What do you think about this little trick? Let us know in the comments.
If you do the crepe in the pan like a normal crepe, you will need more than one overlapping to cover the entire length of the filet. Done this way, the crepe is super easy. You don't even need to flip it. Just be sure to make your crepe very thin, like this. And we put it into the oven until we see it's pulling away from the baking tray. Ready. Man, this smells so good. And this is our blanket, our shield, for defending against the liquid in a soggy bottom. Look how thin it is. Here we are making another with the rest of our batter. With this, we will make some cannelloni. Why not? Look how our filet fits perfectly inside. Now let's move on to the layer that hugs our meat. Mushrooms. In our case, we're adding also some white truffle. It's a trifecta of umami. We start by finely chopping these common button mushrooms. Here we're using a big knife, the best way to preserve the mushrooms, but use a food processor if you prefer. And now we're gonna dry out these mushrooms in the oven to remove any excess water, which can cause problems during the cooking of our beef wellington. First, we're just preparing a quick little sofrito, sauteing some shallots with parsley and butter. And we mix that in to flavor our mushrooms. Already, we distribute our mushrooms between two baking trays, add the sofrito, a drizzle of olive oil, and we give it all a quick mix. Here we've got two trays of mushrooms because we want to use the leftovers for making a few cannelloni. But for the Wellington, probably one tray of mushrooms will be enough. And it's into the oven, a 350 Fahrenheit, 180 fan, stirring frequently. And here are our little mushrooms. Ah, oh, they smell amazing. And as you can see, they have shrunk in size, like mushrooms tend to do. They haven't lost flavor, only water. And now we take these mushrooms to the next level with a bit of white truffle. Traditionally, Beef Wellington calls for a little bit of Dijon mustard, but because we're in Italy, we're replacing it with truffle, which the Italian region of Umbria is famous for. And if you are already salivating, it's not going to get any easier because now we move on to searing our filet and deglazing it with a bit of cognac. You can see how the fillets have dried. All of the juices are reabsorbed because we have given time for the osmosis process to find a balance. And so there's nothing left to do but sear it with concentrated or clarified butter, which you can easily make at home or buy in the supermarket. And you can check out our other video recipe to learn how easy it is to make clarified butter at home. It's important to use clarified butter because it has a high smoke point. The temperature we have in this carbon steel pan is truly high. We are talking 350 to 400 degrees Celsius. At this temperature, we are quickly producing the Maillard reaction between the carbohydrates and the proteins in our meat. And it is this reaction that we want for a proper sear and even color with a minimum loss of juice. Mamma mia, what a smell. Our team is feeling jealous, hungry. It's really hard to keep them on a leash here. Above all, our cinematographer, who is a hardcore carnivore. And look at our little tower standing high. This is first-rate beef, ladies and gentlemen, and all of those in between. There's nothing more to do but deglaze with a bit of cognac. And shield your eyes, for here we have the fire of Hades. Look at the color. See how the cognac has added color to the outside of our filet. 
This is truly the ideal color. Our sear is perfect, and with what we've deglazed, we can create a cognac demi-glaze by combining it with what is called a fond brun. A fond brun is just a stock made from roasted meat and bones. We'll use our demi-glaze when we serve our beef wellington. Now that we have all of our parts prepared, there's nothing left to do but assemble. Let's start with the crepe. We've already trimmed it to the fit of our filet. To the top, we cover our crepe with a layer of sweet prosciutto. Then the duxelle, our mushrooms. We're making a layer that's a little shy of one centimeter thick. Some people like to put the prosciutto in contact with the filet instead, but we prefer our truffle-flavored mushrooms. As a side, here we've modified the classic Wellington that has a Dijon mustard by replacing it with the truffle flavor. If you're a mustard-loving Anglo-Saxon, feel free to do this dish with the mustard. Here at Piat, though, we prefer to use our humble Italian white truffle. Now we wrap our filet with lots of care, and we end up once again with what looks like a big sausage wrapped in plastic. Be careful here, too. Make sure that the filet is completely wrapped in the crepe and tightly compressed with the plastic. In this step, we are securing the shape of our beef wellington. And now we put this filet to bed for half an hour. It's important to let it rest so that the meat's juices have time to redistribute to the inside. And finally, it's time to wrap our filet in puff pastry. Now, we recommend you make the puff pastry at home, mm, say the day before, but we know most of you won't want to make it from scratch. If you must buy the puff pastry, it's better to ask your favorite pastry shop to buy some off of them. They probably make big batches daily and will be happy to sell you a large piece. We've made ours from scratch, flavored with a touch of truffle. And let us know in the comments if you'd like us to post a video on how to make laminated pastry at home. We just covered the inside well here with an egg wash of yolks and cream. We don't need to piece together cuts of pastry here because ours is large enough to wrap our filet. With our leftover pastry, Maybe we'll make a rustic galette with wild boar sausage and black truffle from Norcha. Why not? A fork is perfect for closing the edges, and then we simply wrap the small excess of puff pastry underneath on both sides to give our beef wellington a final lovely shape. Another brushing of egg wash over the entire outside, and our beef wellington is ready for the final decorative touch. Do what you like, but here we are going with a classic decoration. Check the video description for the tool that we are using here. And with this lovely net, we're going to catch ourselves a filet. Some more egg wash and our beef wellington is ready for the oven. 400 degrees Fahrenheit, 200 degrees Celsius for 20 to 25 minutes. However, you'll need to judge doneness for yourself by eye or better yet with a thermometer. The puff pastry needs to be well colored. The ideal temperature of the meat inside should be around 48 Celsius for a medium rare beef. We recommend not ruining this creation by cooking the meat too long. You can always pass slices of the beef wellington back into the oven for those who prefer their beef a little less rare. A gorgeous beef wellington. It's almost a shame to open it. This lovely beef wellington will serve four to six people easily. Notice how our puff pastry is dry and crispy. No soggy bottom here. And here's our demi-glaze with cognac. To describe the smell we've got here in the kitchen would be sadistic. So try it for yourself and soak it all in.
And if you like this video or learn something new, like and subscribe. And click that bell for notifications when we release a new recipe. And of course, let us know in the comments how your beef wellington turns out. A buon appetito!